Now we're ready. Okay, you ready? I've got a, what here? What is this? A binomial. All right, so I want to look at my binomial, and I kind of want to do reverse distributive property. All right, so you know how when we distribute, we're multiplying something into the parentheses, and we're getting like a binomial in return? Well, this time we want to take the binomial and go, okay, what could I have multiplied both of these by to get this answer? All right, so we're looking at the six. And, yeah, and I don't like it. P, so we'll just use an X right there. How about that? Let's make that 6X plus 18. Y'all okay with that? So P's a bad variable to use. Because sometimes for y'all, it looks like a what? A plus sign. All right, so here we go. Let's look at making that a 6 and an 18. So if I were to look at 6 and 18, what is the greatest common factor of 6 and 18? What can I pull out of both a 6 and an 18? 6. 6? 3. Or 3. Which one is it? 6. six. Okay. So if I pull a 6 out, okay, if I pull a 6 out, what I'm really saying is, is I can divide both of these numbers by 6. Do we all agree with that? That's what I'm saying? All right, so I'm pulling a 6 out. You ready? If I pull a 6 out, is there a variable I can pull out? Okay, well, this one has an X, so I can pull one out of here. But does this one have an X? No, so if I can't pull out of both, I can't pull it all. Okay, so X has to stay. So then... If I take that and divide it by 6, 6 divided by 6 is going to get me left with a what? Take what? 6 divided by 6 is leaving me with a what? A 1. A 1 what? X. Do I have to put the 1 there? No, I don't have to. Okay, I can if it makes you feel better. My math lab's not going to like it, but you can put it there if you want to. Okay, and then 18 divided by 6 gives me a what? Positive 3. What is my greatest common factor? 6. When I pull that out, what's it leave me with? X plus 3. Now think of this as reverse distributive. If I were now to distribute this, what should happen? I should get 6x plus 18. Well, 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times positive 3 is positive 18. Does that make sense? So you can kind of self-check because you can distribute it back out, and you should get what you started with. Okay? All right, let's look at this one. You ready? Y to the fifth minus Y to the seventh. They don't have any whole numbers that I have to worry about dividing by. They do have exponents that I have to worry about. How many can I take out of each one of those? I can only take five out. So I'm pulling out a y to the fifth. And when I pull that out, what am I left with on the inside? Hold on, time's out. We good? Okay. So if I have, if I'm taking all five of them, what do I have left? A one, right? Because there has to be something there that I can multiply y to the fifth by to get y to the fifth. Because I'm taking all of the y to the five, or I'm taking all the y. Does that make sense? So I have to put a one there, because if I don't put a one and I put a zero, Y to the fifth times zero is just what? Zero. zero. And I've got to have something that I can put Y to the fifth there with. Okay? But now that I've got seven of them, I take five of them. What am I left with? A minus Y to the second, because there's only two of them there still left. Does that 
make sense? So now when I get ready to distribute, I'm self-checking. So I go y to the fifth times 1 is y to the fifth. y to the fifth times y to the second. Remember when I multiply exponents, I'm really what? Adding. So 5 and 2 get me 7. Does that make sense? So far so good? Yes or maybe? Okay. So you've got to look at it. Is what do they both have that I can take out? 